I wanted to make this video about the nine signs that you are in a relationship where your partner does not respect you. When we get into a relationship, it gets really easy to dismiss the little things that can happen as, ah, it's just a one-off. Oh, it's no big deal. It's not going to happen again. I want to point these nine behaviors that your partner may be engaging in and flag them because they are a real issue that cuts to the core of what creates a healthy and a long lasting partnership. Perhaps that's what we should do is start with kind of what is the foundation of a healthy and a long lasting partnership? Well, there are four kind of categories that I think about when I think about a healthy and a long lasting partnership and it's awareness, it's how you deal with conflict. It is the values that you have and that your partner has. And it's also the connection that you and your partner not only have, but how you are both showing up to strengthen it. And so awareness is both awareness of yourself and awareness of what your partner needs in a relationship. And in order to have self-awareness and awareness of what your partner needs, you got to have a level of understanding about yourself and you also have to have an interest in learning and being influenced by your partner and what their needs are. And what you'll notice is of the nine things that I'm going to flag for you, like if you see this shit, it is going to attack one of these pillars of a healthy relationship. The second category was conflict. Now, it may surprise you that I'm labeling conflict as one of the categories of what makes a relationship healthy. But uh, when you look at research about couples who stay married and couples who get divorced, it's the couples who know how to fight with respect and how to resolve problems together and end gridlock. Those are the couples that stay together in healthy relationships. Those folks that don't talk, that hold grudges, that give each other the silent treatment, this is all behavior we're going to be flagging in the nine signs that your partner is disrespecting you and you got problems in your relationship. That creates massive conflict because you're actually not working anything out. You're in gridlock and standoff with one another. So awareness, the ability to resolve conflict. Another one is shared values. I mean, you hear obviously about trust and honesty in a relationship is super important, but so is the fact that you and your partner uh, have a vision of how it is that together you can create a more meaningful life. Super important. If you're missing that, forget about it. And finally, connection. And I can sum up connection this way. Do you and your partner engage in behavior where you're turning toward one another? where you have an admiration for each other. If you don't, you are not going to have a relationship that gets stronger over time. If you have the kind of relationship where you're constantly turning away from each other or griping about each other, that is not the foundation for a beautiful and a long lasting relationship. And so I know you're nodding along because what I'm saying makes a lot of sense, right? Of course, you got to have self-awareness and awareness of your partner. Of course, you need to problem solve and resolve conflict in respectful ways. Of course, you should be with somebody that shares your values. And of course, I want to be with somebody who turns toward me and helps strengthen the connection. No kidding, Mel. Well, easier said than done. And the reason why it's easier said than done is because there are nine types of behavior that we kind of dismiss as, okay, not that big of a deal. I can live with it, whatever. And the truth is, now that you understand what really builds a healthy relationship and strengthens it over time, you'll see why these, not, these behaviors that I'm about to explain are non-negotiables. Like if you spot this in a relationship that you're in, you got to flag it, you got to call it out and you cannot tolerate it because if you allow this behavior to continue, it will destroy your relationship. Okay. So behavior number one, your partner keeps lying to you. And I don't care if it's just little white lies about where they were or uh, where they spent their money or who they were hanging out with. Oh, I was just hanging out with the guys. You know, but it was a particular one of his friends that you don't like that much. So lying in a relationship, it 
literally cuts to the core of breaking apart any kind of shared values because you need trust and honesty. And even the white lies uh, mean that there's no trust and honesty because when somebody's telling you a white lie, they're hiding information from you or they don't want to deal with your reaction. So now they're manipulating you. And in terms of connection, the second that somebody decides to lie about something, they're turning away from you and they're disrespecting you. And so lying, non-negotiable. And don't just kind of roll your eyes at the white lies. You got to flag this stuff. You got to draw a boundary with it because it will not work in a long-term successful relationship. Second behavior that uh, you have to address is when your partner gives you the silent treatment. Giving someone the silent treatment is one of the most manipulative, dysfunctional ways to behave in an adult relationship. I mean, think about uh, the silent treatment, like a, a kid. Fine, I'm not going to talk to you. When somebody gives you the silent treatment, number one, it's probably something that their caregivers gave to them when they were a kid. So this is their default way of dealing with conflict and upset. They take themselves away from you. They turn away from you. They, uh, instead of turning toward you to resolve conflict, they keep things in a gridlock because they refuse to talk to you about it. This is like an emotional guillotine when somebody does this to you. It is immature, it is manipulative, and it is selfish, and it is a power move. You're dealing with somebody who either is so uncomfortable talking about their feelings or so uncomfortable uh, having conversations to resolve conflict or worse, that they are such a narcissist or engage in narcissistic behaviors that they literally stonewall you instead of talking to you. This should not be tolerated, period. This is a coping mechanism if your partner's doing it that they've probably been doing for a long time. And you've got to draw a boundary with this because you cannot build a successful, loving, and trusting partnership with somebody who at any moment will just turn away from you, cut you off, and stonewall you with silence. It's immature, it's rude, it's disrespectful, and you need to literally call it out and not tolerate it. Another behavior is when they use your insecurities against you. Now, remember the four things I was talking about? Like, you got to have self-understanding and understanding about your partner. And you got to have shared values. And you got to have connection. When somebody uses your insecurities against you, uh, that's mean. That's belittling. And what happens over time, if somebody is using your insecurities against you, like let's say that English is your second language and they make jokes about your accent or the fact that you talk so fast that they can't understand you, or they make jokes about what you drink or what you eat or uh, the whatever it may be, your skinny legs. When they use that stuff against you, uh, the way the ex treated you, it could be anything. That is the exact opposite of connection. That is the exact opposite of respect. That is belittling, it's abusive, and uh, this is a major red flag, and you should not tolerate it. Uh, kind of taking it a step further, uh, do not ever let your partner call you names. This is number four. And especially if they sort of dismiss it, this is called gaslighting, when they call you a bitch or they call, yeah, you know, they like make fun of you. They call you names you don't like. And then they're like, what's wrong with you? Can't you take a joke? I didn't really mean it. If your partner is calling you names, this is not a form of connection. This certainly does not uh, recognize uh, shared values. They're not resolving conflict. They're creating it. And more importantly, if you tell them, don't freaking call me that, like it's rude, it makes me feel bad, and they continue to do it, now you know you're with somebody who doesn't have your best interest in mind, and you need to end it as far as I'm concerned. If you got somebody who's calling you names and you tell them not to and they keep doing it, and then they gaslight you and say you're the problem, f*** that. This is not a relationship for you. The fifth thing 
that we need to signal as a red flag is that they constantly interrupt you, talk down to you, talk over you, or kind of shoot you that look like, I don't want to hear from you. What that signals to you is they don't care what you think. What that signals to you is that there is no connection here. There is superiority. What that signals to you is that they believe that you're not in a relationship. They believe that they're more important than you because what they think is more important than what you may think. In fact, if somebody's always doing this, they don't really want to understand or connect with you. They just want to dominate you. And so that is also not going to work and should not be tolerated because that's not a healthy relationship. The sixth thing that you want to be on the lookout for is if your partner will not allow you to have some independence. Said in a uh, scarier way, if your partner is controlling or slightly stalkerish or crazy jealous or is going through your things or snooping through your email or doesn't trust you or kind of accuses you of things, this is a danger sign because this will not get better over time. This is somebody's crap from the past, probably an ex or probably something that they witnessed growing up in the household that they were in that are major trust issues for themselves that they're now taking out on you. A healthy, mature, adult relationship is one where there is mutual respect and mutual trust. And by the way, you don't earn someone's trust. If you're in a healthy relationship, trust is given, trust is assumed, and trust is broken whenever there's behavior that uh, causes it to be broken. But if you're in this relationship with somebody, you've done nothing wrong, and this person is controlling you and accusing you and snooping and acting in a way that clearly demonstrates they don't trust you, you need to get out and that person needs to get into a therapist chair because it's not your job to fix this. Uh, number seven, if your partner is making big decisions without you, uh, there is no relationship, period. If your partner is, uh, I don't know, taking a couple thousand dollars out of the joint savings account to go buy, uh, you know, something that they wanted without telling you, if they have a secret credit card uh, and they're making purchases and you have no idea about this, it's also a form of lying. Let's say that they've uh, just decided that um, over the holidays, you're going to spend the holidays with his or her family and they didn't even consult you on it. These kinds of big decisions, the kind of decisions that impact you, uh, these are decisions that you're supposed to make together. These are decisions that couples talk through. These are decisions that if, you know, there's a little bit of stuff to sort out, you seek to understand where one another's coming from. You compromise, you listen to each other. When somebody's making big decisions without you and then kind of acts all annoyed when you are not happy about it or when you call them out on it, that's a huge sign that this is not a relationship that's going to last. This is a dictatorship where somebody's calling the shots and ex ex expects you to fall in line. Not going to work. Number eight, if your partner is constantly telling you how you're supposed to feel versus listening to you and validating how you feel, you're not really in a relationship with somebody. You are with somebody who not only doesn't have their own self-awareness, but they're not interested in gaining any self-awareness about how you're feeling about anything. And so if they're ignoring your opinions and then telling you that you should do this or that or the other thing, if they say, oh, come on, that was just a joke. Why aren't you laughing? If they say it's no big deal, I don't know why you're upset about it. If they're constantly not listening to you and invalidating how you feel, uh, this is a major issue. You're not with somebody that's turning toward you. They've turned away from you. They're not interested in becoming aware or connected to you. This is somebody who just has you there next to them. And there's really not a strong connection. I'm, I'm dead serious about this. And I know that I'm like making this bigger. And here's why. So many of us just like see these warning signs. They're like, well, well, it's, 
it is a big deal. It's a big deal because, you know, there's a big difference between what people say and how they act. And if you want to know how somebody truly feels, ignore what they're saying and watch how they behave. And here's the final, the ninth sign that you have a partner that disrespects you, you are in a relationship that is not healthy, that is not going to go the distance, or if it does go the distance, it's because you're ignoring these things and you're not happy. But it's when your partner ignores your boundaries. You see, boundaries are critical. Boundaries are critical not only in friendships and with work, but boundaries are so important in your romantic relationships. In fact, healthy relationships are relationships that have boundaries and between people who establish and respect one another's boundaries. Like, so when you have a partner that takes some of your money, doesn't tell you, doesn't return the money, spends it on something you know that you don't want, that is an example of somebody crossing boundaries. If somebody's invading your personal space, if somebody is pressuring you to do things that you don't want to do, that's an example of how somebody's crossing your personal boundaries. If a person is speaking to you in a way that is demeaning or calling you names, again, another example of how somebody is ignoring your boundaries. If your spouse or partner is blowing up your phone while you're trying to get work done at work and you've told them not to, this is another example of how they are disrespecting your boundaries. Now, the good news is these nine things are also examples that if you are in a relationship where there is a foundation and you raise any one of these issues, hey, honey, you know, this is a boundary of mine. When I'm at work, I need to concentrate on work. And it is embarrassing and distracting when you are texting me all day long. And then when you get upset that I can't text you back and I need you to stop doing that. Okay. Like I cannot text you all day long while I'm at work. If your partner's reaction is, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I had no idea. I just missed you, babe. I promise I will work on it. Thank you for telling me. That's a great sign. If you say to your partner, hey, um, I don't want you to tell me what you think. I just need you to listen and I need you to validate what I'm feeling. And they go, oh gosh, sorry. Yeah, of course. Thank you for telling me that. And you start to develop a new habit of when you're about to talk, saying to your partner, hey, I just need to vent. Can you listen and, and not give me advice right now? I just need somebody to hear me. And your partner goes, great. I will absolutely listen. Now you're taking this thing that used to bother you and you're turning toward each other and working through it. If you call out your partner because they made big decisions without you uh, and they say, you're right, I shouldn't have done that. It would have felt terrible if you had committed to your parents that we were going to be with them this year and you didn't talk to me first. I got it. Thanks for telling me that. That's an example of how these things, when called out with the right person, has you turn toward one another. If telling your partner that their lack of trust because of what their ex did is driving you crazy, it's disrespectful and it must end, and that gets them to go to therapy, that's a sign of somebody working hard and gaining the awareness that they need so that they can be a better partner. That's a good thing. All the other behaviors too, if they stop calling you the names and apologize, if they become better at not interrupting, but become better at listening, if they stop using those insecurities and start lifting you up instead, and if your partner starts working really hard, because for people who have the silent treatment as a default, this is kind of hardwired. If they're avoiding conflict, stonewalling you, but you see them trying, you see them working with a therapist. You see them using simple things like saying, I can't have this conversation right now because I'm too emotional. Give me 10 minutes to collect myself and I will come back in this room and we will talk through it. That's a good thing because you're seeing the person take the feedback and actually try to change. And finally, lying, when you catch them, there's kind of two liars. There's the people who are lying to you because they are manipulative assholes 
And that's always going to be a problem. And then there are the people that are lying to you because they're terrified to disappoint you or because they have low self-esteem or because they've always been lied to and this is kind of the default, but they don't want to do it. And so they're willing to do the work to become more self-aware, to get to the heart of why they're so afraid to tell you the truth. And it typically has to do with self-worth and self-confidence and self-love. And honestly, those kind of breakthroughs that you have as a couple that are the result of you calling out these nine forms of disrespect that are causing breakdowns, if you're in the right relationship, any breakdown that you have will become a breakthrough that causes y'all to turn toward one another and work on creating better trust, better communication to solve these problems and old habits together. That's when these things are good. If you get pushback or nastiness when you call out these nine things, lies, silent treatment, using insecurities against you, calling you names, interrupting when you're talking, not trusting you and invading your privacy, making big decisions without you, telling you how you're supposed to feel or ignoring your boundaries, honey, there is an exit sign over the door and you need to locate it and walk out it. Alrighty, there you go. Seems obvious, but you got to get serious about calling this shit out because you deserve to be in a healthy, loving, and committed partnership with awareness problem solving together, values and connection. And now you got the formula to make it happen. All right, if you loved this video, thank you for watching and you're gonna wanna check out this one next.